morning, friends. It is lovely and a privilege to invite you to join us for our uh, 10 a.m. Wednesday morning service. We gather every Wednesday at 10 o'clock. There's a group, usually six of us, sometimes a few more, occasionally one or two less. Um, it's a wonderful tradition here at St. Paul's. This is usually a little more of a healing service. Um, we do uh, Eucharistic Prayer A, right to, um, but we do it a little more loosely. Today, because it's myself and Tim and all of you who are watching, we're going to do it a little differently still. Um, our emphasis is gonna be on our prayers for one another. The, um, we'll be following in holy women, holy men, the saint of the day. Today it is Cyril. Bishop of Jerusalem. That's typically what we do. And then we'll go on with the prayers of the people and what is basically a normal Eucharist service up to that point. Um, but then we're going to conclude with all of us saying together the Lord's Prayer and not have a Eucharist. Um, this is a really, um, it's a beautiful service. It's one of my favorite ones that we do. The intimacy of it the heartfelt prayers that we have for one another. Um, and I want you to know that we always pray for all of you, our whole congregation. Um, Mary Martha Allen always, um, she instituted a um, congregational cycle of prayers. So every Wednesday we pray for different members of our own congregation. And so we make it through the entire congregation. Um, in a, in a cycle, much as we do on Sunday, uh, as we have a cycle of prayers for different parishes of our diocese. Um, so this is a lovely way that we hold all of our members in our hearts and actively in our prayers. So we'll be doing that today. Um, so we begin this morning, as we do all mornings, I'm gonna uh, ring the bell and we're gonna just take about a minute of meditation time to sort of center ourselves in being here and our purpose here this morning. So we begin on page 355 of your Book of Common Prayer. If you have a Book of Common Prayer at home, uh, of course, follow along, but um, it's fine if you don't also. We'll, as we do in the Episcopal Church, we carry one another along in our prayers, and one or two of us saying to them together carries the rest of us along with them. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His That's mercy endures forever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, 
that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and mortal one, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Strengthen, O Lord, the bishops of your church in their special calling to be teachers and ministers of the sacraments, so that they, like your servant Cyril of Jerusalem, may effectively instruct your people in Christian faith and practice, and that we, taught by them, may enter more fully into the celebration of the Paschal Mystery through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Hebrews 13, verses 14 through 21. For here we have no lasting city, but we are looking for the city that is to come. Through him, then let us continually offer a sacrifice of praise to God, that is, the fruit of lips that confess his name. Do not neglect, neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. Obey your leaders and submit to them, for they are keeping watch over your souls and will give an account. Let them do this with joy and not with sighing, for that would be harmful to you. Pray for us. We are sure that we have a clear conscience, desiring to act honorably in all things. I urge that you all the more to do this so that I may be restored to you very soon. Now may the God of peace who brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, make you complete in everything good, so that you may do his will, working among us that which is pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our psalm this morning is psalm number 122, and Tim and I will be saying it together here in, uh, here in church, and you may read along with us, or you can just listen. Um, our, it's found on page 779 in your Book of Common Prayer, page 779, and we'll be reading in its entirety psalm 122. I was glad when, when they, they said, said to me, let us, let us go, go to the house of the Lord. Now our feet are standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem is built as a city that is united with itself. To which the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, the assembly of Israel, to praise the name of the Lord. For there are the thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. Peace be within your walls and quietness within your towers. For my brethren and companions' sake, I pray for your prosperity. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek to do you good. Now we have our gospel reading. This is the holy gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, 
beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. So I'm going to read you the short biography of Cyril, Bishop of Jerusalem. Cyril died in the year 386. Cyril is the one we have most to thank for the development of catechetical instruction and liturgical observances during Lent and Holy Week. Born in Jerusalem around 315, Cyril became bishop of that city probably in the year 349. In the course of political and ecclesiastical disputes, he was banished and restored three times. His catechetical lectures on the Christian faith, given before Easter to candidates for baptism, were probably written by him sometime between 348 and 350. The work consists of an introductory lecture, or pro-catechesis, and 18 catecheses based upon the articles of the Creed of the Church at Jerusalem. All these lectures, the earliest catechetical material surviving today, may have been used many times over by Cyril and his successors, and considerably revised in the process. They were probably part of the pre-baptismal instruction that Agaria, a pilgrim nun from Western Europe, witnessed at Jerusalem in the fourth century and described with great enthusiasm in the account of her pilgrimage. Many of the faithful would also attend these instructions. Cyril's five mystagogical catecheses on the sacraments intended for the newly baptized after Easter, are now thought to have been composed, or at least revised, by John, Cyril's successor at, as Bishop of Jerusalem, from 386 to 417. It is likely that it was Cyril who instructed the observances of Palm Sunday and Holy Week during the latter years of his episcopate in Jerusalem. In doing so, he was taking practical steps to organize devotions for countless pilgrims and local inhabitants around the sacred sites. In time, as pilgrims returned to their homes from Palestine, these services were to influence the development of Holy Week observances throughout the entire church. Cyril attended the Second Ecumenical Council at Constantinople in 381 and died at Jerusalem on March 18, 386. Cyril's book has greatly enriched the observance of Holy Week in the 1979 Book of Common Prayer. And that is, of course, the Book of Common Prayer we use today. So you may not know that a, a saint's day is always the day of death for the saint. Um, but it's the day that they enter into heaven. And so fitting that Cyril, um, during Lent for us, it is always during Lent, actually, I think. I don't think that Lent can come so late. And so it's a time that we're preparing for a holy week. And we are preparing for um, exactly the period of time that he spent <coughs> Uh, that his legacy is so rich for the church. Reading about all of this, so catechesis is a teaching, and it's typically the teaching of the church, and I'm mindful especially of the 15 people who took our catechism class here at St. Paul's this fall. Now, some of them had already been confirmed, and they were preparing to be received into the Episcopal Church, so... Um, they, they weren't all candidates for confirmation, but nonetheless, it was an incredibly invigorating class that we had. It, was, it thrilled me to have so many people wanting to dive into both the theology of the church and also the polity and history of the Episcopal Church in particular. 
And um, we are, of course, waiting for Bishop Megan to come to officially uh, receive those people and confirm those people who took this class. Um, so right now, of course, everything is a bit up in the air, and we don't know what date that will be, but we're hopeful that it will be sometime in the not distant future. Um, so this is a, a very typical sort of Wednesday uh, sermon that we have. We always read something from this book uh, about a saint, and then it sort of launches us off into a discussion. If we had our regular group here, Tim knows this very well, the discussion takes off in all kinds of directions. Um, it's really a thrilling time for me because uh, your sisters and brothers in Christ have an awfully lot to offer. And it's always fun for me to have sort of an interactive uh, sermon time. And it enriches us all. So um, that's something that I'm missing right now. But it's good to be here with Tim. And it's good to know that we are still connected through the wonders of technology in this day and time that we live in. So it's a blessing to still be the church with you today. And we're probably reaching more people than who normally come to this service. So that's also exciting. So thanks be to God for Cyril and Jerusalem, and thanks be to God for all of you. Amen. So we're going to continue now with the creed which is found on page 358. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Normally, during the prayers of the people, we would be standing right in this area and holding hands, but we're keeping a little more, a little more of a safe distance from one another today. But I ask you to get comfortable, and um, I will lead us in prayers. Let us pray. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for presiding Bishop Michael, for our own Bishop Megan, we pray most especially for our sisters and brothers in this church family. We pray for all members and friends of St. Paul's Church. We pray for our clergy and lay leadership and all those who are not able to be physically present here with us today. In these trying times, we pray you open our eyes to see new pathways for our ministry to the world around us. We pray for all ministers and people of your church. 
wherever we find ourselves today. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, that there may be peace where there is strife, and that you will guide the leadership of this and every nation for the well-being of all people. We pray for our elected officials and all of those who are making very important decisions for people all over the world right now. We pray especially for Donald, Gavin, James, Leah, and we pray for all others that they will act with wisdom and resolve for the well-being of our communities. Lord, we pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, those in prison. We pray for those in any need or trouble. Lord, we pray for the staff, the volunteers and clients of Reach for Home as they do their utmost to care for our homeless population and to make wise decisions on their behalf. We pray for Healdsburg Shared Ministries as they seek to provide food for all those for whom this time is a special hardship due to food insecurity. Lord, we pray for those working within our shower ministry that we will be able to provide this vital service to those who have no other place to bathe. Lord, we pray for all who have been commended to our prayers for support and for healing. We pray for Ariana, Deborah, Barbara, Boone, Krista, David, Will, Emily, Jake, Phyllis, Jean, Leah, Michael, MJ, Richard, Sandra, Tom, Mona, Elizabeth, and Nancy, and for all those named now, either out loud or silently in our hearts. Lou, Susan, Debbie, Frank, Eileen, John, Sarah. Letitia, George, Max. We pray for all those around the world who are ill from the coronavirus, and we pray ardently for all medical professionals who are caring for them. In our congregational cycle of prayer, we pray for the Bella Campbell family, Christine, Bill, Ava, and Lily. We pray for Kuko and Sylvia Kadina, and we pray for Fred and Raina Bunker. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. Lord, we pray that in this stressful time that we may find and be found by God. I ask your prayers for the departed, especially the Reverend Sean Cox and the Right Reverend Barbara Harris, and for Rolando Orzoco Sr. We pray for all those who have died. Lord, we pray for those whose lives have been disrupted by confinement and cancellations for those workers and business owners everywhere 
who are experiencing a loss of income, a loss of work. And we pray for those who are anxious and afraid. In the midst of these hardships that are upon us right now, we thank you for uniting us together within Christ's body and for your assurance that nothing can separate us because of your love for us all. We pray we are united again soon in one another's company. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. We pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day, indeed, in this very day. Almighty God, to whom our needs are known before we ask, help us to ask only what accords with your will and those good things which we dare not or in our blindness cannot ask. Grant us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So I would like to make a few announcements now. Um, we are going to be live streaming all of our regular services, or not quite all of them. We'll be doing one service on Sunday morning at 10, and we will be doing this service at 10 a.m. on Wednesdays. We will also um, be live streaming a Bible study today at 4 p.m. Um, it'll be an interesting way to do this. Tim, you're here with me now. Yes. We will be able to receive comments from people. Am I right? Yes. So um, if, you, if you're on Facebook and you look down and you're watching the live stream, I know that there's a little place to make comments. And... Um, I know a bunch of you have done that because when I've been watching the services, I've been seeing comments come up on the screen. And um, what will happen is Sal will be using a just a regular facing camera, so she'll be able to see the screen as she broadcasts, which is a little weird because you're looking at yourself as you broadcast. But she'll be able to see comments come up on the screen. So you can ask a question, hit return, and she'll be able to respond to it. Um, she'll also get to see all the little hearts and smiley faces and all that you guys do when you like something that she says. But yes, yeah, so you can ask questions directly to her and then she can answer them. Those comments will also be on the feed if you go back and look at the post later so you can go back and, and read that. And I assume that what Sally will do is when somebody asks a question is she'll repeat it to everybody so you all know what the question is being asked. And you can... Um, and then she'll reply to it. So I want to tell you what the scripture is that we will be studying. It'll be for the fourth Sunday in Lent. These are, um, we've been working our way through the book of John last week, this week, and I'm not sure what it is the following week, but we've got some really, really meaty, long passages from John. Um, this week, it is John 9, 1 through 41. It is a very long passage, and it's about the blind man whose sight is restored and the whole motif of sight, who is blind and what it means to see, and also what is the purpose of Jesus' healing is very, very important in this passage. So I, if you would like to go ahead and read it ahead, um, you can find it on the lectionarypage.net, lectionarypage.net, it's John 9, 1 through 41. John 9, 1 through 41. And we also have, um, the Old Testament is 1 Samuel 16, 1 through 13. And what's interesting about this is it is uh, the anointing of King David. And in that story, we hear... God saying, I don't see as you see. Because David is such a young shepherd at that point. He's completely discounted because he has all these strapping, handsome, competent, kingly looking older brothers. And yet David is the chosen one. And so there's, a, there's more about sight in that reading. That's 1 Samuel 16, 1 through 13. And then we have Ephesians 5, 8 through 14. 
and the 23rd Psalm. What a great psalm for us to have at this time especially. So you can find all of those readings on the lectionary page. And we'll be back at 4 p.m. to talk about that. And just to jump in here, if you don't remember the lectionary page and all, just search for lectionary. There are only one or two sites that will come up at the top. One of them is lectionary page. One is hosted by Vanderbilt. That's the one I use. Um, and when you go to it, it should pop up year A. That's the year that we're on. And if you don't remember where we are, it's not by date. So you're not going to look up this Sunday's date, but what you'll look up, there should be a little click. There'll be a little link for like Lent. And you click Lent, and it should say Fourth Sunday in Lent. And you click on that, and it will show you what the readings are. And often, depending on which page you go to, there'll either be another like link that will take you to what the actual readings are, or they'll just jump up right there. So you don't even have to look at anything. It'll come up with the full reading, whatever the verses are. So it's very easy to do. Yeah. So um, that's what's going on today. Uh, we have been, I've been posting a morning prayer, which I'll continue to do at 10 o'clock. I know that Linda Clater did um, a Compline yesterday. Day before yesterday, Paul Blanchard sang a psalm for us that was very, he chanted a psalm that was very beautiful. And if any of you would like to do a, con a, a contribution to our St. Paul's page, go ahead and film yourself and send it to us and we'll post it. Um, this is an exciting way for us to sort of experiment with what we have to offer the community. And it doesn't have to be an evening prayer or something out of the Book of Common Prayer. There may be a poem that has been really helpful to you at this time or some, some other resource that you would like to share. And this would be a good way for us to stay in touch with each other as a congregation. Um, so we do have at our disposal this Facebook page. Um, I think you all know I, I'm not a Facebook person. I have not had a personal Facebook account until now. Um, I think I had one like 10 years ago and I never used it. And so my husband would sometimes post things on it after we moved here, but then I deleted it all together. And, um, but now I'm back on Facebook and so, for the purpose of us staying together as a congregation. These videos are also available on YouTube. I know that I heard from several people who watched the Sunday service on YouTube, and we're also posting more on our website. So if you're having trouble accessing anything, don't hesitate to call the office, call your flock leader, or call me um, so that we can stay in touch in all the ways that we're able to. Um, one of the blessings of this time is I know I've certainly been on the phone. I've talked to family members I don't normally talk to. Um, I've also been talking a lot to people in the congregation. If there's someone in the congregation, especially someone who doesn't use social media, I ask that you pick up the phone and just call them to check in. This is a good time for us to be doing that. Um, so, uh, think about maybe the person who sits next to you in the pew on Sunday. Give them a call. Just say, give them a, a, a shout out. It's another way of doing an elbow bump at this time. Of course, uh, you are all very much in my prayers. You're in my heart. Um, and I'm just grateful to have you all as my family at this time. Anything else we should announce, Tim? No, I am a little bit behind in posting the videos to YouTube, but they'll all get up there and we're going, we're trying to make this as smooth as possible. And I just want to um, second what Sally said, if you need anything, uh, you can reach me. Um, I think the, the, those of you that are in my flock have my phone number. Um, everybody else, you can call the office and um, I'll, they'll give you my phone number and I'll be happy to talk to you. If you are isolated right now this is this is a tough time with the shelter at home but we aren't supposed to have contact and I have no idea what the stores are like today um, I did all my shopping yesterday and the day before and the day before that I actually have more food than I could deal with um, but if you need anything please call the office um, have them get in touch with me and I will figure out some way to 
drop something off on your front porch, um, just don't ask for toilet paper because I don't think that's being able to be found anywhere. That's about it. We might be able to rustle up a roll or two for you yeah. if you need toilet paper. Um, one of the things to make sure that you have is a directory, a church directory. If you need one of those, I will personally drop it by your house. Um, yeah, so that, that's an important thing to have. If you need one, uh, the office will be open. We're being, the office is open for shower hours now. We've moved Beth Greenwald and Jane Tevis Wood. Their hours are shower hours because we don't have any volunteers. We saw this coming. It was, so we, we were moving in this direction um, already but their hours are just covering the shower hours. The city of Healdsburg is providing clean uh, laundry service for all of our um, towel needs. So we're keeping up with the shower ministry and we anticipate doing that um, as long as it's necessary, um, as long as we can. Um, I've heard rumors, although I don't know if this is going to happen, that maybe the county will put homeless people up in hotels and if that happens, then we won't need the shower ministry anymore. But Right now, we definitely do. They do. Uh, the shower ministry is necessary for people who don't have other places to bathe. Um, so life is going on. We're practicing very safe social distancing. My hands have been very recently cleaned, sanitizer everywhere. In the church, it's one person at a, at a time coming in for the shower. Um, we have one of those fancy thermometers and um, we're able to take people's temperature, and um, if anyone is sick, they will go directly to Healdsburg Hospital. Um, but right now, things are just going along well and smoothly. Everyone is being incredibly cooperative, and that's something to be very grateful for. I feel like we're pulling together in all the best ways. I wanna especially thank you, Tim. You have really pulled this congregation into the 21st century <laughs> when it comes to communication. And it's been a, re a real ministry to me and to all of us, so thank you for that. You're welcome. But let's remember that the best thing you can do is rooted well, way back in, well, I wouldn't say the 18th century or even the 19th century, because they didn't know about hand washing then. But the best way to stay safe is still those practices that we have from the early 20th century. Wash your hands, don't touch your face, and keep a good social distance between people. We really need to cut down on contact. I just wanna tell a short story that, that Sarah pointed out to me because we were talking to her grandmother who lives in England and is 92 years old. And they're on actual, their seniors there are basically on quarantine for, well, it was four months, now it's down to four weeks. And we're like, do you have everything? She's like, I have a month of food. And the thing is, she always has a month of food because she grew up in the time when there was rationing and she was used to having maybe a bag of sugar for a year, you know, until the next harvest season came around or a loaf of bread a, um, a week. You know, our generation, the younger generation, is not used to that. And I know that the, that the you know, the greatest generation, um, this doesn't, this, you know, in, in comparison, having to like limit social contact and all does not seem that much. But this is just as much of an emergency as sort of that rationing was. You know, we really need to, as they say, flatten the curve and the best way to do that is to just comply with what the county is saying and, and you know, take an extended vacation. And I think that's what's really best right now. And uh, we're here for you. And if you need anything, I will run out a pound of sugar personally. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. On that note, let us say together the Lord's Prayer. I'm going to stand for this. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Live without fear. Your creator has made you holy, has always protected you and loves you as a mother. Go in peace to walk the good road and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you now and always. Amen. Thank you. See you again soon.